At a seminar on strategies to add innovation and value to educational research, the speaker was Professor Guo Zhen Huang, Chair Professor of the Graduate Institute of Digital Learning and Education and Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences at National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. The seminar first presented five strategies for adding innovation to research studies. Professor Huang then gave authentic examples to illustrate how these strategies work in practice. Many people ask me um, how to conduct a good research. Okay. Here are my suggestions. First of all, we need to have a good research topics. But what is a good research topics? Before uh, determining a good research topic, we need to know the future of technology if we try to do something about e-learning. And also, we need to know what has been done. So. Um, when my PhD student told me that, oh, I want to do something about digital campus learning, I will tell him or her, okay, you can start by uh, writing a review paper <laughs> of uh, digital campus learning. That's the way for you to know what has been done. Of course, the most important thing is we need to know how to find a research topics with innovation. And uh, after that, of course, we need to have some uh, proper uh, experimental design, and we need to uh, write uh, our finding in a paper in a logical way. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to um, conduct a, a simple test. Okay, I will ask some question. In this slide, there are several project titles approved by Taiwan government in uh, 2010. So let us uh, look at this project title. The first one is from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 impacts of information technology on students' learning motivation, learning process, and the performances. So here is the first question. This project was approved by Taiwan government in 2010. If it is proposed in this year, 2017, will it have a good opportunity to be approved? It's seven years ago. <laughs> it should be 4.0 now. There is a term that makes this title still innovative nowadays. Learning process. Why? Because most of the study try to evaluate students pre-test, post-test, pre-questionnaire, post-questionnaire. But till now, so far, relatively fewer study have tried to investigate students' learning process. Their learning log. Right? They are learning pattern? Yes. So I think this title still have the opportunity nowadays. Let's look at the second project. Motivation-oriented design and the performance evaluation for game-based learning. This project was approved by Taiwan government in 2010. If it is proposed this year, will it have good opportunity to be approved? Yes or no? <laughs> yes? Why? What makes it still new? Which term? Game-based learning? Mm. In seven years ago, if you do something, I use game to teach. That's very innovative, right? But now, too many games. Sorry for that. OK, any others? Motivation, in fact, many study already invest motivation, right? Of course, it's still a good topic, but it's not very new. No, okay. But if you ask me, Professor Huang, I would still like to do something about digital campus learning. What should I do? What should you do? What do you think? If you still want to do something like this, and you want to propose the project in this year or next year, what should you do? You need to add something new, right? So what can you add? You can, you can invest students' learning process during the digital campus learning activity, right? You can add this to this, right? That's 
a possible answer. But uh, I'm not suggesting everyone go back uh, to uh, your school and uh, start doing the same. <laughs> okay, I just try to um, yeah give some example. Okay, let's look at the third project title: Impact of the Lead In of Demo Spoken Person. This is a character who always propose opposite op opinion on young students' participation in collaborative argumentation and the development of argumentation ability. This project was approved by Thai government in 2010. If it is proposed this year, will it have good opportunity to be approved? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. More people say yes. Yeah, it's apparently yes. Okay. Why? <laughs> Which term make you say yes? Argumentation ability. Why I say so? Because most of the study try to investigate, evaluate students' learning performance, motivation, attitude, cognitive low self-regulation, right, and so on, right? Few studies have tried to invest students' higher order thinking ability. One of the ability is argumentation ability. It's related to uh, critical thinking, something like that. How about this one? Implementation and evaluation of an emotional intelligence assessment platform for preschool children. What do you think about this project title? It was approved by Taiwan government in 2010. Will it have good opportunity to be approved in this year, if, if proposed in this year? Oh, many people say yes. Why? Which term may you say yes? Which term? Yes, thank you. Emotional intelligence. Yes. I think few studies have tried to invest this, this issue, right? And also, that's another term is worth notice. Okay. Preschool children. Because most of the uh, ELAN study focus on um, yes, school students, something like that. elementary school students, high school students, uh, college students, right? Few studies have been tried to um, yeah, invest the impact of e-learning on preschool children, not to mention their emotional intelligence. So I think this kind of project or this kind of research topic will be highly accepted even nowadays or the coming few years. Okay, and maybe we just look at uh, the other one, the last one, okay. Impacts of student cognitive style on their reasoning performance in digital game. Do you think this um, project will be approved if it is proposed in this year? If I told you yes, you have good good opportunity to be accepted. Okay, and what is the most important term? Impact? No. Students' cognitive style or reasoning performance or digital game? Which one? Okay, yes, reasoning performance. It's also a higher order thinking competence. So uh, once a student come to tell me that, okay, I want to do some mobile learning study, or say, okay, then you start from writing a review paper of mobile learning. So this is what he found, okay. He really do a Review, okay. <laughs> this is the review result, okay. He reviewed a paper from selected SSCI journals, okay, and uh, from the 2008 to 2012, and he found this fact, okay. Most of the mobile learning um, study are conducted for environment and encourage courses, historic and cultural courses, language, and this is engineering and computer science, and fewer study of mobile learning have been conducted for astronomy, physics, chemistry, biology, art, medical and nursing, mathematics, and business, okay? So I tell him, okay, perhaps you can start from apply mobile technology to those courses. You can talk to the school teacher if they are willing to um, use mobile technology in their class. 
He also reports that those mobile learning activity uh, were conducted for uh, indoor and outdoor activity, also uh, for uh, individual and collaborative uh, learning. And uh, a large number of uh, the study report that the students' learning achievement have been significantly improved after using mobile technology to learn. Also, their learning motivation have good improvement and uh, their learning interest were increased uh, after using mobile technology to learn. So from this very uh, preliminary uh, review, we find some, three, some um, fact that mobile learning could be helpful to students in improve their learning achievement, motivation, and interest. And uh, they are highly accepted by those students. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, if we want to um, conduct a good study, we need to add innovation to this study. But if we want to add innovation to this study, we need to know what are new and what are not new. We need to have the ability to distinguish that. So here are my suggestion for five strategy of adding innovation to your studies. The first is using new technology. But we need to know what the definition of new technology. What is the definition of new technology? Okay. Let me try to ask you something. Okay. Is mobile technology new? Is augmented reality new? AR new? No, not new enough. Okay. But what are really new? If you want to try something new, I mean using new technology, maybe you can try IoT, Internet of Things. And that's really new because few studies have been conducted using IoT, or some wearable device, right? Yeah, that's really new, okay. But I think most of you here are not uh, from the technology background, right? You are from the educational background. So you may say, okay, but I'm not engineering. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a, uh, of the technology background, so I don't have the ability to use something, some technology that's really new. That's okay. You still have four opportunity to add innovation to your study, okay? The second one is to investigate and seldom discuss the issue. What are seldom discuss the issue? Motivation? No, many people already discussed that. Attitude? No. Learning achievement? No. Almost every study have tried to test students' analogy, okay, okay. What are new? I just say higher order thinking ability. Something like problem solving ability, learning performance, learning behaviors. Yes, learning behavior is highly related to learning analytics, right? So those are still new now. So um, the problem is how can we evaluate students higher order thinking? That's another problem, okay. And the third is to propose or lead in new strategy or tools. In fact, when we talk about new strategy or tool, I'm not saying that you need to propose a, a completely new strategy. For example, in uh, maybe uh, several, years, several years ago, we, we, when we try to conduct mobile learning activity, I am thinking about what kind of tool or strategy can be used in mobile learning. And I think, okay, everyone know concept map, right? Concept map is not new, but in the mobile learning, Context in a real world learning context using concept map is new because most of the teacher ask students to drop their concept map in class, right? And uh, based on what they learn from the textbook and they drop a concept map, right? But how about we let students develop their concept map and, and then bring their concept map to the field to make observation in the field and uh, then based on what they observe to modify their concept map so they can connect what they have observed in the field to what they have learned in the textbook. That, that becomes a new thing. So concept map is not new, but when it's used in a quite different learning context, it becomes a new tool or new strategy. Okay. And also we can apply our approach to seldom consider the subject. Yes, sometimes a study is innovative it's because that the subject is, is really being considered such as gifted students, they are special. And 
working adult, we have done a survey. Few studies have been conducted for working adult. Most of the studies are uh, used uh, in school for those uh, students. And also, students with high learning anxiety, yeah, that's a, a special group of students. Also, preschool children. That are very particular subjects. So you can consider that if you have, you know some teacher who are teaching uh, those subjects. Yes, we can do that. We also can apply our approach to sell the investigative domain. As what I, I just showed you, the survey, the review result, okay. For example, the art courses, design courses, business, chemistry, physics, nursing education, and uh, enterprise training. These are seldom uh, applied domain. So here are my suggestions. For a researcher, I would like to suggest that you can design a series of research topics based on your priorities. Everyone has his own priorities. Some researchers have a high technology uh, skill. He knows many new technologies, so he can try to dig in those new technologies. Okay? But some teach uh, language courses, so of course it's good. You can try to apply those technology to language courses. But if you are teaching English, okay, for example, let me ask you, if you are teaching English, which one have no more innovation? Reading, listening, writing, or speaking? You can apply the technology to different English courses, right? Which one has higher innovation? If the students are EFL students, right? Okay. Not from the native English speaking country. So, what's your answer? Speaking, yes. Very good. And the second? Writing. Writing, yes. In Taiwan, students can read, they can listen, but they cannot write. They cannot speak because they seldom have opportunity to practice that. So let me tell you my reality. Okay, <laughs> my PhD uh, dissertation is about uh, rapid degree. Do you know what that is? It's a degree to summarize or to organize a person's knowledge. It's just something like a, a concept map, but concept map organize a person's knowledge from a uh, macro view. Rep degree, it also summarizes what you know in a degree in a micro view. Okay, it's something different. Okay, it's used to compare the different similarity of things. Okay, so guess what I have done? I try to use rep degree in mobile learning activity to help students collect and organize what they have learned in the field. That becomes something new. But rep degree was proposed by George Kelly in 1955. It's a very old method, okay. But I give you a new innovative scenario. And also I use it as a collaborative uh, rep degree for game-based learning. I also use that uh, as a supporting tool in a game-based learning approach. And the second I uh, suggest is that uh, we need to know the existing measure for all questionnaire in our research design. What I say is that uh, do not try to develop your own questionnaire unless you are an expert of doing that. Okay? If, uh, if you are not an expert of developing new measures or questionnaire, just try to use the, what have been proposed by the experts. So, um, I'm going to show you some example of what we have done based on the five strategy of adding innovation to uh, our studies, okay? This one is about leading in new technology. In fact, um, I cannot say this is really a case of uh, leading in new technology, but I uh, would like to say that uh, many studies of mine are conducted in a butterfly and country garden, <laughs> okay? Okay, in the butterfly garden, in Taiwan, we try to help students to learn the encouragement of butterfly 
by uh, have been there, situated in the butterfly and kaju garden to observe the kaju of butterfly. Okay. So in the traditional uh, mobile approach, the mobile device is, is used as a guide to guide the student to uh, make observation in a butterfly garden. Okay. And in this study, we use the augmented reality AR in a real world observation. <laughs> and you might say that, hey, Professor Wang, you just told me that uh, AR is not new. Yes, but this paper is conducted several years ago, okay. So AR is not really new, I know. But we also did in the educational game. We try to combine AR with game, so it become a new idea. This game is like a ball game. Do you know why it's a ball game? You throw a dice and then you throw three and it works three steps, right? And when you walk to a location, you can buy a house, right? Then you own the house. And if someone else go to your house, then he needs to pay. And if he broke, then you win, right? That's a ball game. And we try to integrate AR with ball game. And then the student play the game in a butterfly garden. So when he uh, throw the dice, he need to follow the instruction to walk uh, maybe to some, some tree. And in that tree, there are some uh, different pieces of butterfly in each uh, butterfly area. So when you walk to some place, there are different species of butterfly. Oh, stay there. So if he want to buy the tree, then uh, he need to answer the question. So he need to observe the butterfly in Karaji, and then he can answer the question. Okay. So if he correctly answer the question, he can buy the tree. So he owns the tree and those butterfly. And then if his classmate come to that tree, okay, he need to pay, right? But if this classmate can successfully answer a question, then he will have 50% discount. <laughs> okay. And uh, we let give them two hours. In these two hours, who have the more money, who win? So you see, everyone is trying very hard, <laughs> try to uh, uh, earn more money <laughs> during the learning process. Okay. Of course, the result is good. Huh? We compare the, uh, the, the, the group with a uh, gaming approach and those with conventional mobile learning approach, and we find that uh, their learning performance are quite different. And their attitude, of course, are quite different. And this is another example for uh, um, investigate a new or seldom discussed issue. This is another version of the ball game. And what we try to do is to invest students' behavior pattern. Because the students need to play the game in a small group. So it's a competition between the groups. Okay. So we, we try to invest their uh, behavior pattern and their tendency toward the critical thinking of problem solving. So this paper is published in the next uh, last year in uh, BJET. So this is a learning scenario. Okay, the students try to learn to know in uh, the plans on a school campus. Also, this is the interface of the ball game. We have made some improvement. It, it become an app, so that they can use the temporary computer or the smartphone to play the game. And also, we have made some comparison. Using the uh, mobile game with the uh, conventional mobile learning. And then we evaluate the learning achievement, motivation, tendency towards critical thinking, and problem solving. But the most importantly, we evaluate the learning behavior pattern. We try to analyze the learning behavior pattern based on some coding scheme. When we want to uh, analyze student behavior, we need to know what kind of behavior behavior we are interested in. So we need to define a coding scheme. And this coding scheme is based on IAM proposed by other researchers. Okay, so we did find uh, several behavior during the learning process. And uh, then we try to compare the difference between the two groups' behavior. For example, in the experimental group, it seems to have more field observation behavior. Also, they have more comparison behavior, and they have more uh, data search behavior. And then we try to analyze their behavior pattern. Sorry, I cannot tell you how to analyze 
today, but if you are interested, I can send you the detailed file or, or paper, okay? Okay, this is a behavior pattern of an uh, experimental group. It sounds complex, I know. And this is a behavior pattern of the control group. And then we try to compare those patterns, and then we find a difference. Here are the difference. The experimental group uh, has, after select a task, frequently they will try to observe in depth. And then when they uh, propose an answer, they will try to observe again. And for the control group, the frequent occurred pattern are propose an answer and then read material. They don't like to observe. When they face a new task, they just try to um, look for the answer from the, the database. Also, they frequently use try and error uh, strategy to find the answer. But in the gaming group, they dare not do that because they, you know, if they try an error, they will be punished by the game, okay, they will get a low score. So they, they try very hard to make some observation to, to get the, the, the result, okay. So this difference also give uh, the uh, researcher or the school teacher uh, some, some, uh, some hint about uh, how to uh, yeah, reconsider their learning design in the future. In this application, the most important part is to evaluate students' inquiry performance. This is also a very uh, higher order thinking performance, right? So the most difficult part is not mobile learning itself. It's how to evaluate students' observation skill or inquiry skill. So we cooperate with some uh, experts to uh, design the rubrics for evaluating students' observation skill and inquiry skill. And this is uh, the learning uh, scenario. A student need to make some observation, uh, collect data, in the field to observe those uh, uh, mangroves, breakfast spoon field, and uh, some crafts. And this is also another uh, very particular study. It's for nursing skill training. Nursing courses is a seldom applied domain, okay? So it's uh, new. And the skill training is also, okay? We, a few, few studies have tried to, uh, you know, index the, uh, how to Im improve student skill. And here are the learning scenario. This is a uh, nursing school. And there's a room, and there are many dummy patients. Each dummy patient represents a disease. And there are many RFID tech on the dummy patient. So each student have a PDA with an RFID reader. So um, when the student come to maybe come to be this patient, dummy patient, he need to measure his body information, so he can use the ID reader to touch each tag, and then the system will tell, tell the student uh, oh, his, his, his heartbeat, uh, the frequency of the heartbeat, or the any, any kind of information. He can collect his information. And uh, then, after collecting those information, the system will also tell the student the blood test result of this patient. So the student know the body information of this dummy patient. Also, he got the blood test result of this patient. And uh, then the system asks him to make the diagnosis. So what is the disease of this patient? So you need to answer this question, okay. And uh, after the student answer the question, the system tell the student, what is your mastering label? Mastering label means uh, you need to correctly diagnose the patient's problem. Also, you need to do that efficiently, quickly. If the diagnosis process is too long, the system tells the student, okay, it's your master degree is too low, or you correctly diagnose the, the, the patient's problem. Okay, so you need to practice again. This, this about knowledge and skill, right? And uh, we found that uh, this kind of training is very successful uh, in comparison with com conventional, traditional uh, instruction. So the school will now use our uh, system strategy as a formal training program, okay? Also, we can apply mobile learning approach to particular subjects. 
Do you remember who are the particular subjects? Gifted student, right? We try to compare the difference between a gifted student and an average student in using mobile technology to learn. We try to investigate what are the difference between their learning performance. And then we find some interesting uh, result. Also, we have uh, tried to uh, develop some uh, performance support system for teachers. Because we consider teachers as a uh, uh, rarely uh, discussed uh, subjects, we pay lots of attention uh, on uh, how to improve student learning performance, but we pay less attention to um, helping teacher, okay, uh, to uh, manage their class, okay. So we try to do something like that. We try to train the family or patient in ICU. That's a very <laughs> special uh, subject, right? Because when, when, when your family is in ICU, I mean, uh, the patient is very serious. Else. The family must be uh, very um, anxious, right? They don't know what to do. And, and then they frequently call the nurse, oh, oh, something happened, but in, in fact, nothing happened. Okay. Okay, so um, the hospital have difficulty in training this family or patient because mm, they don't like to um, listen to many things. So usually in conventional approach, there's a nurse who give them some books and uh, try to teach those uh, family how to uh, take care of the patient. Okay, but now we try to use another way. We try to use an e-books. So when the family will stay in the ICU, we just give them a tablet computers, and then they can interact. They can look for anything. Okay, for example, they can uh, try to realize every device. When they click on this device, it will have a, a very detailed uh, introduction to the device, and they, the device can even uh, turn, uh, turn you know, it's a 3D okay, device. And also, they have some small tests we can ask, okay, do you really understand? Okay, please answer the question. We let me ensure that you really understand what we're talking about. Or they can uh, try to um, answer this question by connect the correct uh, name with the correct device. Also, we try to um, apply technology to those seldom investigated domains, such as this. We call it complex science experiment. Uh, we call it a single crystal X-ray diffraction operation. In fact, I do not know what this is. But uh, once I um, talk to um, a student from the material science, okay, this is for um, chemi chemical science or material science. I told them, do you have any um, difficulty in learning some some uh, courses? Okay, you just let me know the most challenging what the most challenging course is and he told me this so this is the most challenging course in, in, in our department single crystal x-ray diffraction operation now the researchers in that department use this experiment to analyze the 3d structure of a compound material so they know the 3d structure of the compound material then they can know the value of the compound material. Okay, that's what they are tr trying to do. Okay, and however, the process of doing this experiment is dangerous. So usually they need a, a full-time uh, guide uh, from a senior researcher. So if I'm a young researcher, I want to do this experiment. I need a, a company of a senior researcher. But this experiment takes three to four hours. It takes time. So it needs a, a lot of manpower to uh, assist those uh, young researchers. So this is what we are trying to do. We try to use mobile technology, and uh, we try to develop an expert system, and uh, we try to uh, inquire the knowledge of those senior researchers and put the knowledge into this knowledge base, and uh, use the knowledge base and expert system to guide the student to learn uh, in this context. So the system would guide the young researcher to use the optical microscope, try to cut a good uh, pieces of the compound materials, 
and uh, then uh, to operate uh, these complex devices, and uh, then try to learn to read the output data and to, to um, interpret the output data. Of course, we find that uh, the result is really good, although we have only five subjects in <laughs> because it takes time. Within a semester, only five subjects using the traditional approach and five subjects using our approach. But we already find significant difference between the two groups. For example, the number of mistakes they made per experiment was decreased from 2.3 times to 0 0.32 times. So they significantly decreased. Also, every time needed to deal with the, the fault in the experiment was decreased from 2.5 days to 0 0.45 days. And also, the training time was reduced from 5.5 months to 2 months. OK, finally, this is the last example. OK, the cell then <laughs> investigate issue or cell apply the domain, right? We try to guide the student to learn architectural design. This is an uh, architectural design course in a, a university. The student use mobile technology to observe those model of building and try to design a similar building, okay, and architecture with those similar building. So this is what they are doing. They are try very hard to um, yeah, take photo and take notes. And then, then uh, finally, like, the output is just a, a design of their new building, okay. So uh, before I end this talk, I would like to uh, give you a checklist. <laughs> if you are trying to do some new study, Maybe you can check um, for this item, okay. What is the innovation and contribution in this study? Sometimes innovative does not mean it is valuable, okay. It, sometimes innovative maybe, maybe mean it is uh, ridiculous or something like that, okay. So it must be meaningful. You need to know what kind of new strategy or application or subject or issue or even the technology are new. Is there anything new in your study? You need to answer this question, okay? And uh, then you need to know what kind of learning content and objective of the learning. And uh, who are the subjects or participants of the experiment? And uh, then what are you going to measure? If you know your objective, and then you know what to measure. And then you know your research question. And the following that, the final question is, why do you think your approach could be effective? You need to answer this question. Once the, a student told me that, okay, I want to use a uh, wearable device with concept maps, I think that's really innovative. Also, I'll say, yeah, I agree that. That's really innovative. And then I asked him, why do you think integrating concept map into wearable device could help the student learn better? He said, I don't know. I just want to try. I said, no, you cannot conduct this study because you don't know why. You, are, you shouldn't try an error strategy to do your research. That's not good. You don't know why. Even the result is good, you cannot write the paper. You don't know how to write because you don't know why. And then, then another student come to me. Oh, I want to use um, concept map in a mobile learning activity also. Why? He told me that, oh, when student was, um, situated in a real world environment using mobile technology. They need to face the real world learning targets and they use the mobile device to access to the supplemental material and also the uh, re, uh, learning task provided by the teacher. They also need to remind what they have learned in the class and from the textbooks. Also, the knowledge source is too, too, too much for them. I think they need something good some strategy or some good tool to help them organize all those these things, all those they have observed, those things that they observe and what they have learned. They need something to organize that. I say, good, you got the point. You can do this research. Okay, so we need to find some topics innovative and also meaningful. Meaningful means uh, we need to know how they can benefit students or benefit teachers or even 
how your study can help decision maker to make good decision. Okay, okay. So uh, this is my talk. Thank you.